So, hi everyone. I'm happy to, to be here with you today and I hope you have been enjoying the Yama Festival so far. It has been super, super interesting. So thank you everyone uh, for sharing your stories before me. Uh, I'm Lorian. I've been part of Richemont Internal Communication team for six years now, uh, six years last month. I am a digital communication senior specialist and it's really good to see you here with me to embark uh, on our Richemont Yammer journey. So a little bit of um, who we are. So we are one of the top luxury group and owner of prestigious brands that we call the Maison, such as Cartier, Van Pleff & Arpel, Gégère Le Poultre, to name a few. And our Maisons are recognized for their excellence in jewelry, watches, in fashion and accessories. So um, as a group, we have a complex matrix structure, I might say. Uh, with the support function being the backbone to an ecosystem of brands, uh, regions, entities, so a lot of satellites uh, going on there. And we are currently around 36k employees around the globe. Our population is made approximately of one-third desk employees, one-third retail employees in boutiques, and one-third of colleagues working in our warehouses and production lines. So needless to say, that these offline employees are for us the most difficult uh, to reach via our digital channels and they go from Gen Z to baby boomers and with regard to tech abilities so we range we have a wide range so from super tech savvy to not techy at all and we also have people and I think that's everywhere we also have people not interested in any kind of technologies so where do we come from with social media? So it dates back in 2012. So we had a very quickly, uh, we had very quickly a fast growing freestanding Yammer ecosystem of more than 30 networks. So it was really urgent for us to unify our solution and offer, um, and offer a global tool for our employees to align their uh, employees experience with just one tenant instead of having to disconnect, reconnect, disconnect, reconnect, et cetera, et cetera. So we based um, our study on the social interaction that's uh, quite limited on our intranet, only with comments and likes on news article. And as a big group, we saw a lot of great opportunities to connect our people with this matrix organization. We wanted to empower them to share knowledge. We wanted them uh, to uh, share skills, to break silos, and we wanted to keep them engaged. So we really needed a platform where our employees and leaders could interact with each other. And so in 2017, uh, we it was a year where we decided to go for, for Yammer. And we were willing to align the group on a single platform, manage centrally and remove the complexity of multiple tenants. So one enterprise network, align community creation, common security standards and allied tool governance. So in 2018, we use our most advanced tenants as uh, the Richemont, uh, Richemont Group Enterprise Yammer and we decommissioned all the other ones. We did a soft launch in July. Um, this is everything went wrong, but, and because of our organizational structure, and because it's quite complex, uh, all the maisons were invited to also launch on a voluntary basis, whenever they were ready to roll out the tool and whenever they were ready to uh, support their users. So between 2019 and 2020, we experienced a small amount of organic growth, but by the time we reached 2020, we recognized that it was not working, we needed to do a formal relaunch in order to boost the use of the social network and truly use it as a cross enterprise channel. So the pandemic surely helped to bring more users on Yammer, but we realized that a couple of pain points were still here, such as tool confusion, and, and we, need to, we needed to address them. So we used Teams relaunch uh, and we we embarked in this Teams and Yammer uh, adoption campaign, explaining the purpose of the tool, explaining the benefits and having better leadership engagement. And 2020 relaunch. So from that, we learned a lot. So what could have been done better before 2020? And this is the question that we asked ourselves before creating our relaunch campaign. 
So first we had difficulties to be aligned on a clear position at the group level. Not all the stakeholders were aligned and to this day, not all the brands are aligned uh, on the utility of uh, this kind of tool. It's still a work in progress. Also in our mind, it was clear how Yammer would fit in our application ecosystem, but obviously it was only in our mind and it was not in our employees' mind. So the purpose of the tool, the why, was not clearly defined and not understood by our audience. So we heard um, a lot of colleagues saying, oh, I don't know why uh, we have this tool. I don't know what is it for. I've got no time to do uh, to go on social media. I don't have one personally, so why should, should I go on, on social media for my professional life? So we needed to address that. We also had not enough licenses for everyone, so the process of accessing Yammer was quite tedious for our users. They had to request um, uh, user licenses, granted or not. Uh, it was a bad, um, it was a really bad um, first impression, I might say. We also based our launch almost solely on our single channel, which is our intranet. And Currently, our intranet is targeted to our core target desk employees, and these employees are actually already quite engaged. So, and they feel part of the company, they feel part of the community. And by focusing on them only, we missed a huge part of our audience who actually needs extra care to feel engaged, extra care to feel closer to the group and feel connected to our vision. And of course, this audience is made of our offline employees, the one in production, the one in warehouses and the one in boutiques. We also had this assumption that because we're used to social media in our private life, it's going to be super easy to pick it up uh, for our professional life. And we were so wrong. Uh, it's actually very different. And we didn't think that any follow up was necessary. Necessary, And no, it, you need to follow up. And finally, we didn't push enough to get our leaders buy in. We didn't rely on lead by example. And in the end, um, now we realize it's actually the biggest driver of adoption. So I would be super happy to know if you came across this kind of challenge, uh, if you had other challenges when you launched your Yammer community. So I'm really happy to discuss about that in the Q&A after. So having these challenges, we identified our pain points and we came up with five objectives for our mission. The first objective was to explain the why first and then the how. Explain why this tool is a great opportunity for our employees to share best practice and why connecting them in our complex environment is a great added value for everyone. We also wanted to empower our users to be active on the tool, to interact and not to be shy. Good interaction is a virtuous circle and the more you do, the more you have. We also wanted to bring a sense of belonging by closing the gap between employees from different maisons, from different regions, and more importantly, between employees and the top management. We also wanted to establish collaborative ways of working thanks to communities of practice, communities of interest, breaking the silos, uh, be quicker to communicate, have lesser emails, the damn emails, and create a networks of employees. And obviously, uh, this is uh, the goal to everything, we wanted to generate a long lasting adoption by creating a good habit of using the tool more and more. So in a nutshell, our mission was to empower our people to work smarter and grow professionally and personally thanks to effective and relevant collaboration tools. So here I'm, I'm mentioning collaboration tools because again, it was between Teams and Yammer. So we articulated our campaign around three pillars, the communication, so the knowledge of the tool, the training, how to use the tool. And finally, we found out that incentive is also a powerful tool to engage people. So for communication, we based our communication on all the insight that we gathered again from our intranets. And we noticed that our news featuring our people and success stories were getting more engagement than the others. So we decided to do the same here. And our campaign featured our Yammer champions, some of their posts, um, we also had messages with call to action expressing the main benefits uh, of Yammer, illustrated every time by a post from one of these champions. 
So for example, you have stay in the loop with the latest news and announcement with our HRD. You've got touch, uh, teach, learn and grow, referring to our large LND community. Build Team Spirit, which was all about giving praise to uh, all our employees for the great job that we do every day. Uh, this one was a, a post from our director in China who gave kudos to all the boutiques who opened after the first wave of the pandemic. And the goal here was to give to our comms coordinators all the assets aligned under the same identity, the Yammer identity, but also give them the ability to customize easily the content to their own audience, with their own people, with their own posts, to their own Maison visual identity, and to be able to activate these assets whenever they needed them. So we also set up a wide list of training assets tailored for every type of employees, not only the desk employees, everyone. So quick, uh, quick launch guides and one pager instead of very heavy guidelines for, and for example, we have this one pager, uh, which is uh, which tool when that you have on the right hand side and webinars for different levels of users from newbies to community managers. We also had online roadshows and dedicated websites with tutorials from Microsoft. Finally, we greatly capitalize on our support communities, which were performing well on Yammer. And they are very active and successful, actually. It's always gratifying to see uh, users that are not in a support department or support team helping other colleagues. Um, having this community help us reduce the number of IT tickets, uh, of HR questions, because you, have, you can always go back and, and see what uh, has been asked before. And again, it's breaking silos, it's keeping track of everything. Um, so it, it, these are very powerful communities that we wanted to uh, give more spotlight on. And another example of great communities that we have um, is, and actually one, it's one of our best community and it has been nominated by Swoop um, as one of the most interactive. Um, the HR communities are amazing. They work well to involve everyone, to make sure that everyone feels part of the group. They, uh, they present the newcomers, they give praise, they share information, they share uh, trainings. They really work in a streamlined way. My, uh, one of my colleagues in, in America has told, told me that actually Yammer replaced uh, WhatsApp, their WhatsApp group. So uh, it's, uh, it's a huge success for us to, to see that, um, that tool overcoming another one that is so natural for us now. And we also heavily focused on leaders and having them on board is a crucial step for adoption. Uh, employees are much more engaged when they feel they can be closer to top management and even feel on equal terms with them. And this is what important for us being on equal terms. And um, you can see on the right hand side an example of uh, a senior uh, a senior director who actually did. Uh, it's not his first post, but um, it's I think it's the second one and the post worked that that well and he presented uh, our people in the manufacturer. So it's it's a post from leadership presenting people that are underrepresented uh, on our digital channel. So it was it was a blast. And uh, giving example of leaders who are also Yammer champions often help spark this healthy competition because they always like to be part of the close group of most influential people in Yammer. So it's also a, a great uh, carrot to to make go um, to engage them on, on Yammer. So for the leader, we created a specific leadership guide uh, first to explain uh, explain to them what is Yammer, because as a leader, they are less likely to be naturally interested by the tool. And we also wanted to show the importance of the tool within our company and how big the communities actually is. So we spent most of the time explaining why it's important for them to engage with the tool and their employees and how to position themselves on the tool and how they could bring value to the conversation because they really bring an additional value. So we really wanted them to understand that they have to lead by example and we made it easier for them to onboard with hints and tips, simple action and achievement lists that they can tick every, uh, every day, every week, every month. Um, and you can see uh, you can see the one pager that we give them. And to onboard leaders, we closely worked also with executive assistant and chief of staff, training them and now making sure that they have delegation on the director's account. We have some directors that are actually posting by themselves and they really want to post by themselves. Last time when we went to see one for a post, he was like, no, 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 leave me. I want to post myself. So, OK, we, we, we left him doing it. 
and um, but some other needs this uh, extra notch. So another important aspect of our journey is actually developing powerful analytic reports. We wanted to be supported by a measuring tool that tracks regular stats like audience and performance. Um, we also wanted to give great insight to our community managers to successfully um, manage their communities. We wanted the tool to help us find champions, best performing communities, posts and topics that work well to adapt uh, to adapt what we what we present on the tool. And finally, we wanted to give legitimacy to our investment on the tool, uh, because this is something that is still important. So our goal here was to go further than just having basic insights from Yammer and have the stats with added value to be empowered. And being a community manager, it's a real, real job, it, and not everyone can do that. And um, most of the time, it's employees being community managers, and we are not born communicators. So being supported was important for us. So we chose to partner with Swoop, of course, uh, because it's an amazing analytic tools and it goes beyond simple stats. So thanks to the user friendly dashboard, we were able to onboard many users easily with one training. And we are currently expanding the trainings to all uh, community managers and all the internal communication coordinators. I secretly hope um, that the objective is to open it to everyone, uh, but it's a work in progress. We are also able to uh, better understand our audience, find the gaps, define and adapt our Yammer strategy thanks to the customized insights given by the tool. Uh, I would say it's not measuring for the sake of measurements, but it's really meaningful and actionable data. We also greatly improved our community management skills thanks to Swoop Smart recommendation. We always ask our community managers to, um, to go check these recommendations and make sure that they adapt uh, their communication, the way they manage their communities to all the recommendation and make sure to uh, to stick as much as they can to what their audience needs. And now we are more confident in sharing their reports with our top management. We feel empowered uh, with strong insights. We are able to show them their progress that uh, that we do every month. And we also boost their engagements a little bit every time with specific uh, the specific widgets that we talked earlier, um, such as the one that you can see on the left hand side, the influential people. And uh, a little anecdote here: we have one the, the the leader who actually doesn't want us to help him post every time he has to post an announcement. Uh, you can be sure that we have a call in within the two minutes he posted already asking, okay, am, am I at the top of the of the chart? Uh, how many people did I engage? So he's he's really, really into it. And um, I would like to give kudos to one of my colleagues on the call today, Nicolas Jean, because he's actually um, the most influential person at Richemont who is not top uh, a top leader. So uh, he's working a lot uh, on creating engagement and thank you very much for that. <laughs> And uh, finally, we also got access to best practice documents and also to uh, festivals like this one to, to give us more uh, ideas to, to develop and further uh, develop our engagement strategy. So thank you also very much for that. And again, I invite you to use the chat on Teams or to discuss with me in the Q&A after to, to share with us what kind of analytics you're, you're tracking, um, what is important in your company, what uh, what are you, what is your leadership looking for in terms of analytics? It's always great to share that with the, the wider community. So finally, our journey is still ongoing. A uh, lot of lesson learned, but um, but it's it's always great to to continue on this path. So the first lesson lesson sorry the first lesson that we have learned is to have license for all, give every employee the opportunity to connect within the company, even if they don't have a corporate device, even if they are offline people, um, always give them the access. Then leadership is crucial to generate a lot of user engagements. Leaders must show the example. 20 years ago, we could never get this close to leaders, and now the leaders are accessible to absolutely every single person within the company in a very personal, intimate way. So it 
it creates a lot of engagement and it's great to have them on board. So we are also currently in a workplace revolution where the way we all work is changing rapidly and there are more and more tools to support that shift than ever before. So a lot of them are overlapping and it has become difficult for employees to know when to use what. So always have a clear position uh, for each of your tool and positioning Yammer is very critical. The fourth lesson that we learned is that even though we are used to social media in our private life, having them in our professional life is quite recent. So you should never assume that people will know how to use them instinctively or be willing to use them at all. Interaction is also something that needs to be encouraged on a nonstop basis. It doesn't come organically. This is why the community managers and leaders must be championing the tool. Uh, and always be fostering this kind of interaction. And also the, um, the not the final, the one before the last uh, lesson learned is you have to make peace with the idea of having 100% of adoption. It's impossible, you will never get it. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is realistic though, is to assess yourself years after years, months after months, and to make sure that you're always increasing and you're always getting better and better. And finally, and maybe one of the biggest one, uh, actually they're all, all important, but this one is important, very important. Uh, measurement is crucial to better manage the tool, improve your communities. The sooner you implement a strong data strategy, the more efficient you will be to always um, always answer to the, your users' needs. So voila, I, our, your journey, uh, no, not your, mine, the journey continues. And thank you very much for following me. And uh, I'm more than happy to continue the discussion with you and answer, answer to all the questions.